Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and in this video, we're going to show you a couple of masking techniques for this spot job we're doing, this DIY spot job. And then I'm going to attempt to spot these in without a spray gun, a DIY method. First thing you want to do is mask off so the, the adjacent panels don't get overspray on. This is just a little spot job. We're not going to have overspray going over everything. But we do want to mask around it just to eliminate overspray when we're getting on things that we don't want it to. One method used for a lot of that is back masking, using tape to back mask. Because you never want a hard edge. For example, you wouldn't want to just mask around this and try to spot that in because you'd see the edge. It wouldn't match, it wouldn't look good, it wouldn't blend in and flow right. It just look, it'd look horrible. So we're gonna, that's why I went ahead and sanded out this edge. Now we're not going to paint out to here, but we're going to allow the overspray to kind of blend in. So the first one I'm going to do is back mask. Now basically you're just gonna, this is inch and a half masking tape. Let's get here real close. This is inch and a half masking tape. I'm gonna go over the whole area. The jam here, I'm just gonna mask it off like this. Remember I want to paint about from here to here. That's what I sanded and prepped. Now one thing you need to be careful whenever you're masking is make sure this doesn't lift over and hit some of the top surface. You always want to make sure you may need to pull it back just a little bit. Put it wrapped around that corner slightly. Now what you have is you have masking tape back here but it does not come out and it doesn't go over the edge anywhere, it's pulled back. I'm going to do it on this edge, and I'm also going to do this edge. I'm going to check the same thing, make sure that it's not lapping over to the edge anywhere. Now that I have this mask off, I have something to tape to. So I'm going to get another piece of inch and a half masking tape. I'm going to tape to that edge there. I might get over here. I want to be careful with this masking tape not to go over and hit the panel either. Okay, now I've got both the ends back mask, soft edge there, just in case any overspray gets on there. And we're probably not going to get that far, but just to, just to be safe. Now right here, you can see that there's a primer spot right here. Well, we have a very close edge right there, so it's very possible that some overspray can get on this handle. And we don't want to just mask off an edge there. That would leave a hard edge that you can feel and see. And we also don't want to get anything up here on this pinstripe. That's why we sand it to this body line only. So along this body line here, the bottom part of this body line, around this edge, and then down here, we're going to use a special masking tape that leaves a real soft edge that's uh, not noticeable. What it is, it's a transition tape. It's basically just got the adhesive in the middle of it, sticky in the middle, and then both sides don't have any adhesive on them. And this allows the paint to just to kind of kind of bleed through the edges and then transition to a smooth edge. So we're going to use this on the body lines. And then I'm going to use it along this edge, right on the edge.
and I'm sticking the adhesive, the glue part, right on that line right there. Now this is so far away down here, we probably wouldn't even need to do this with the spot method we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and, and put it down there just for safe measure. And go right inside the body line. Okay, so now we have soft edges built all the way around this. We have the edge of back mass. And then we have the top and bottom with the transition tape. Okay, now I didn't want to skip any steps, but I didn't want to bore you with just masking. What I'm doing is just going around the, the edge that I have made with 18 inch masking paper. It's just to prevent overspray from getting on the adjacent panels. Now I'm masking around the uh, handle so no overspray gets inside that area. Yeah, I was going to attempt to use this pre valve to uh, touch this up, but I cannot get it to spray. Um, I got the, uh, this is automotive paint that I bought for this, and I poured some in there, reduced it like you normally would. I mean, it won't even, won't spray without the red paint. Okay, I took it in there and over reduced it to see if that would work. Um, so I had some more reducer, more than you normally would. Seems like that's working now, so we'll see. Okay, so I'm wiping it down with some wax and grease remover right before I spray. Make sure it's clean, contaminant free. And then I'm going to do a little test pattern on the uh, paper just to see how this is spraying. I've never sprayed with one of these before. You know, I've heard of people using them, heard a lot about it. Uh, first time to actually use it. But I start spraying and it shoots a pretty small pattern, which is good for what we're doing. We're just doing a little spot job that's not metallic. So just keeping the repair area small would be ideal. But what I found, and I, it's hard to see here in, video, in the video, but it shoots a little pattern, but it also spits little uh, drops outside of the uh, spray area. And I was afraid that would be hard to blend in. So I, you know... I'm going to try messing with this some more, experiment, experimenting with it more, but I just was uncomfortable trying it. So I went ahead and got the paint gun out. You know, I was hoping this would work for the DIY out there for a method, but I just didn't feel comfortable doing that. You can see with this, it shoots a real, you know, you can shoot a real small pattern and there's no drops on the outside. So before I start spotting this in, I'm going to tack it off with a tack cloth just to make sure all traces of dirt are removed, dirt, lint, or anything that may be on the panel. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to paint the, the prime area. Now anywhere that I sand with 400 grit, I want to hit with some uh, paint. And I'm opening my pattern up just a little bit, just to allow the paint to go on a little bit smoother. And the first coat, this is called a reverse blend. I'm going to do the entire area that's going to be painted. I want to do with this, uh, with this coat. And I'm going over the, this area. And then the next pattern, I need to allow it to flash and dry, you know, for a few minutes. And I'm coming back and I'm moving in. I'm moving, doing a smaller area. So I'm doing just right outside of the primer area with the second coat. And then I'm going to do one more coat. And this is just the primed area. So I'm putting three coats on, starting out with a large area, getting smaller and then smaller. Now a normal blend would be the other way, but uh, for this it's going to work better to do it this way. Now I've got two guns. I've got one with a blending agent in it. Basically helps blend in the clear coat edge. And I'm going to tack it off. And now I'm going to apply the clear coat. I'm just going to apply it just past the painted area. Getting it adjusted where you know sprays right. And once I have this sprayed on, it's going to leave kind of a rough edge. And that's where this uh, 
this other solvent comes in, this blending agent helps melt that edge in. So I'm just testing the clear, make sure it's shooting right. And now I'm going to spray the entire area with the clear coat. Notice I've got a little wider pattern. Uh, now on the edges, I'm getting that blended in. And this is just around the edges where the clear coat landed. And this way it will melt those drops in. I allowed it to flash off and now I'm putting another coat on. This is clear coat. Kind of fanning fan it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to come back with this blending solvent and once again melt in the clear coat edges. And this just helps blend it in. It's called a solvent blend. Okay, now I've got it all cleared and uh, now I just need to allow it to dry. You need to allow it to dry, you know, so it's We've got the clear fully spot dry. In, blended the edges, solvent blended the edges. Now we're just going to go over with 2500. We're going to go over the whole door. Remember this, we had with 1200, and that'll minimize the so subs. We'll get this whole door ready to buff. I'm just using 2500 wet or dry. Keep it real wet doing this. Okay, I got the whole door sand of 2500. Now I'm going to go over it with compound. Uh, this is a 3M compound, step number one that I'm using, white pad. And I'm just going to go over the entire area, the whole door, because remember I sanded the whole door. So I'm going to buff the whole door with this uh, compound, number one. Then I'm going to go over it with number two. And notice I took the uh, bottom and top off so I can get that area a little better. But I'm going to go ahead and go over it with number two. This is a polish. And I'm using a 3M system here. This one uses a black pad. And now I've got it uh, completed. I've got it buffed, unmasked it, cleaned it up. And that's one way to do a quick spot job. Now there's other ways. This is the way that I showed you. And uh, again, this is just for a quick touch-up type repair. You know, just to make your car look a little better. Uh, professional body shop style. You would uh, sand the whole door, and you'd spot the paint in, and you'd clear the whole door. But if you're on a budget, just wanting to make it look better, you know, this may be a method for you to consider. I hope you enjoyed these videos, um, and be sure and like this video, subscribe to this channel, and you know, let your friends know about us. Thanks for watching, and remember, if something's worth doing, do your best and have a blast doing it. And subscribe to us at CollisionBlast.com for more tutorials.